Joe's Inner Child Podcast. Those two, they're always late. I'm the more punctual one out of all of them. Um, okay, well, I'm going to let me ask you a couple questions before the Phil gets in, you know, even if Van doesn't join us. Um, sure. So uh, from my understanding, Phil brought you on, in on this project, correct? Uh, yes. Um, He's the one that, yeah, we knew, I mean, we knew about uh, he, he was producing a film. And then, um, I mean, we didn't, we didn't really question if we were going to be part of it. We, we knew we were going to be a part of it. And then when he asked us, we were just like, of course, there's, you know, you don't even need to ask. Just tell me what time, what my call time is and where are we going? That's it. So did you guys, I know that this was initially it, it uh, screened in Asia um, back in 2019. Uh, can you tell me when you guys filmed this? Was this like 2017, 2018 when it was initially filmed? Uh, I think it was around 20, in the 2016. Oh, wow. And, yeah. That's so crazy. It, it, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not the first time that happened to me with projects that, uh, that had, had to be delayed. Uh, there's, um, you know, a lot of issues that, that happens with some of these films and it's really beyond our control. It's uh, all about distributors and investors and all that stuff. So it's really out of my department. <laughs> so when you initially um, read the script uh, that um, Philip gave you, did he already tell you what character he had in mind for you for the movie he was producing? Yeah. He just said, well, you know, he was very, he was very, uh, he, he was very uh, simple with it. And I mean, cause we're all brothers, right? We're all, we're all best friends. So he's basically, yeah, I got a movie, I'm doing a movie. You're going to play the bad guy. Uh, you get to shoot a lot of guns. And then Vanessa will be the, the guy that does a lot of um, the comedy stuff. And um so it was basically like, hey, what do you want to do in this movie? Like, you know, he was like that. He wrote, he wrote the story. He went with the story with the way that we wanted to, to play it. And what kind of, what kind of stuff we wanted to do in the movie. Like, for example, Van wanted to do parkour stuff and like a knife fighting scene. And that was all implemented by him. He was like the one that had the ideas like, oh, I've never done this before. I want to, I want to try this out. And then Phil was just like, you know, no questions. He was like, all right, just do it. Just, uh, but make sure you, you practice, right? So Van, that's what Van did. Van went on YouTube and searched a bunch of butterfly knife tricks or whatever. And he just learned it like that. And then went on the set and performed, which was probably my favorite scene in the favorite action scene in the movie. With the knives. Movie. Yeah, yeah. I liked it a lot. Um, so did Van, while we're on the subject of Van, um, do you know if he, did he choreograph like, or did he do anything with the music? Because I remember I had watched another interview and Philip had mentioned like wanting like cowboy bebop style, um, music and, and, um, Van said he knew what he exactly what he was talking about. Now, because of Van's like uh, experience with music, uh, was he involved in the composition on this? Um, as far as what uh, what music went along to tell the story, he he was. A, it was actually yeah, exactly what happened. Van uh, Phil went to Van. He was like, "Hey, I my the 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 score I want for this uh, movie." It's, it's gonna be like Cowboy Bebop. And then Van was like, sure, I'll hook it up. You know, he found his, uh, you know, his music people, whoever, and then went from there. So when you hear it, I mean, I've never, I've never, I'm not really a Cowboy Bebop person, but I, I've heard the music from it and it's, 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 it's exactly what he wanted, you know? Yeah, and um, I, I think it's definitely got that vibe to it. I know that it is, you know, it was mentioned that it has, it does a lot of homages to a lot of different um, films like 80s, 90s uh, action films. Did, is there any like specific 
action star from that time that you kind of look to to build your performance on? Uh, somebody that maybe was prominent in that in that era? Definitely. I think, I mean, we knew what Bill wanted in this movie, you know, to pay homage. And uh, we all grew up watching stuff like, you know, the, the 80s and 90s Hong Kong films, especially the action, action films. And, um, and then, uh, so there he is. <laughs> He's coming in. So, uh, and then. Um, hey, guys. I, oh, man. Hey, Phil. Finally. No, I mean, it was, it was, uh, the link wasn't working. When they sent me the, they sent me the schedule, usually all the links work. It wasn't like a link. I was trying to like type it in. It just didn't work out. Huh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry there was an issue. Uh, Andy and yeah, I have an been just the best of friends. Hank, doing all, I can imagine. all this without you. I can you. imagine. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you can, go ahead and then produce a movie and put me in it. <laughs> That's your job, man. <laughs> So um, I've been asking Andy a lot of questions. We were actually talking about the whole Cowboy Bebop vibe with the music and everything, which I know I is something that. something that you wanted to bring to it. Um, and yeah. on, on that note, uh, are there any other anime uh, influence that you pulled from? I know that you guys were paying homage to 80s and 90s action films, things like that. But you um, obviously have very a lot of interest in anime, so I was curious. Yeah, you can see the so you can see my house. Oh yeah, I see it back there. Um, I saw it in another interview that you had done. Yeah. So I was curious. That was what was making me think. I wonder if there was any other beats. That no, there's. I mean, there's a lot of influences, right? I mean, like, uh, like I mean, not just anime. I mean, uh, if you're talking about this specific movie, um, I, I mean, other than the music, I didn't really pull anything from any anime or anything. But I mean, like, I I've always been influenced. I mean, I've been really influenced by. Cowboy Bebop and uh, Samurai Shampoo, the same director. Nice. Um, those two are my absolute favorite anime series, you know, and I, I mean, it's just not even like taking shots or whatever, but just the feel, the way they, they approach their characters and, um, and how, how, I mean, it's important for me when I design fight scenes that the fight scenes incorporate into the actual narrative. And I think um, a lot of Japanese anime, they do that very well. And I think uh, it's, a, it's a good model to follow. 100 percent now andy to switch back to you uh, you did a lot of gun work uh, with this and i know you said um <laughs> van had looked up and watched butterfly knife videos things like that and kind of just trained himself did you have experience with guns i know that um there was like scenes that you had were not included like a machine gun scene that ended up being in the credits things like that um but did you have to familiarize yourself with any guns or any gun props when you were doing this that you weren't already familiar with? Um, I mean, the, the, the well, machine gun, I wasn't really familiar with it. But I had the great time shooting that thing. And whatever they caught on camera, my expression, that was pure joy and just all real emotion. Too bad <laughs> they cut it out. It wasn't my, it wasn't my decision, buddy. But um, I mean... Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, we we played to our strengths, right? We we made this movie for ourselves, you know, a little bit selfishly, right? I mean, like, um, a Andy, I was like, "What do you want to do the most, Andy?" I, she's like, "I want to shoot the most." And I was like, "Van, what do you want to do the most?" He's like, "I, I want to use the butterfly knife." And I'm like, "All right." So I mean, I want to cater to my brothers first, you know. That's the thing. I mean, for my character, I'm just doing what I do in most of my other movies, except I don't talk as much, right? But um, for, for my brothers, I want to really cater to their strengths, and then you know, Andy always had a love for guns. I mean, it's not the first time I worked as an action director with him. You know, this is the first time that I, I'm kind of in charge of the whole movie, but you know, I know what his strengths are. And then, um, so I try to play those strengths. So I know that, and I had watched a little bit of another interview that you had done. So I know a little bit about like um, the process and, th and stuff, but I wanted to know if you conceptualized this idea, because I know you were a producer and I know you brought your friends in on it. Were you the one who initially came up with the idea for um, this film, Undercover? Yeah, you know, I I, and, um, I guess like uh, the, the, well, as soon as I met these guys, right? I met these guys on one of my, my first gigs and it was their first gig, uh, Star Runner. Um, you know, I'm sure you, you heard of that movie, you know, right, Andy, yeah. one, the Cumber War and all that. But anyway, so we became fast friends. And um, I think like, uh, you know, if for me, it's always like I, I it's always like been like this. I, I'd rather like create than participate, you know. And then, um, so you know, when you're in this business, you're always participating and you're always creating things and other people cutting it up. And um, you know, and I wanted slightly more control because I think 
you know, regardless of the movie or whatever, if your design is uh, complete from the beginning to the end without too many interruptions, the movie is going to be more intact, right? And so my idea was to get my best friends to be in a movie. And then, um, and then uh, when I was working on an another movie, uh, a producer heard that I wanted to do that. So, and he's like, yo, Phil, do you have an idea for a movie? And I said, you know, um, I have a few ideas, but my main thing is I want to do like a really good action, not comedy, but just an action kind of, movie that's you know hark harkens back to the 80s and 90s Hong Kong those movies that really influenced me growing up so that was the idea to do a movie like that with my brothers and uh, you know I always wanted to be like I mean this was another dream of mine another like aspiration of mine back then would be like if me and my brothers like me Andy Van you know could be like you know when people see us they'll be like oh that's kind of like Yun Biu, Hong Gumbo and you know Sammo Hong and and Jackie Chan like the, you know, you, you, they're always making movies separately, but when they make one together, like Wheels on Meals, you know, and they're like, oh, Dragons Forever, you're like, oh, yeah. So I wanted that feeling for, I want the audience to feel like that about us outside the camera as well. And, you know, I think, you know, it, you know reach a certain level of success, you know, want to do that. But anyway, so, you know, that was also the impetus for me to, to make this project. And then um, it went through a lot of different stages. It went through different scripts, different ideas. But the central core theme of kind of doing an homage to 80s and 90s movies you still ended up being on screen. I mean, like, for instance, the name Undercover Punch and Gun. I mean, Andy will remember this. We had to fight for that name. I mean, they wanted something. Retard. Like, I mean, Undercover <laughs> versus Undercover, I think, was something the that, other. Yeah, they, they wanted to fight for it. I mean, I understand. I understand. But I, but I, they don't they don't under, sometimes people don't understand that we understand what we're trying to do, you know, and I think our audience, the audience that we want to reach, like, you know, people like yourself will understand the choices that we've made. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're able to fight for what we want to fight for. And, you know, and most of what you see on screen is what we wanted to have on there. Now, I know that you had mentioned in another interview that you really like to tell the story and drive the story with the action. And you're the action choreographer and you had basically handled all the action in this film, even though some of the scenes are very different. Did you, um, um, did you direct anybody outside of just your buddies on this and fighting choreography on this film that you had? I directed, directed I directed, I, I, um, no, I directed everybody on the film. Um, but I worked with a lot of them before, like uh, Zhang Lo Ha. Zhang, uh, how do you say that her name in Mandarin, Andy? Zhang Lu Xia. Zhang Lu Xia, you know I'm talking about, the female fighter in the, in the movie. Right, um, yeah. I mean, I've, we were in the same company before. I mean, I, mean, I worked with her many, many times, right? I haven't directed her before, but I've worked with her many times. So, I mean, you know, actually, no, I did direct her before. <laughs> I don't know. But whatever the case, like, um, yeah, I directed all the scenes and created all of them. And, and I think the process for me is it doesn't matter what movie I'm working on. It could be my own movie. It could be uh, someone else's movie. I just need to read the script. I understand what the director, what the story is trying to tell. And that, I mean, an action scene for me is no different than a dramatic scene, right? So every punch, every kick is a piece of dialogue. You know, I always say this, like, if I'm sad and I punch somebody, it's different than if I'm happy and I'm punching somebody or angry. It could be the same punch, right? But I deliver it differently. So I need to know, in, in, and as an action director, not only do I design the, the action, I have to tell, like, Andy, look, you're, you don't care about these guys. These guys are nothing. You know, you shoot them, like, play around when you shoot them. Or, or this guy's a little bit more of a challenge. So you take this guy more seriously. Then I, and I give it to Andy. I mean, Andy knows. I mean, he's not his first rodeo, right? So he knows how to emote those things while he's doing action. So I think when you're in charge of a project, you can give very clear, delineated like direction to people to fit your own narrative, your own your own scheme. Because but when you're working for somebody else, um, a lot of times I find like they cut up your action. Because when I do it, when I design a scene, I have a middle, I have a beginning, middle, and end, right? And, and it serves a purpose. It's like a joke. I, there's a punchline. But when other people cut up my action, they don't see it as a, as a whole story. They see it as sections of, of action. So when they cut it into their movies, it seems like there's no soul, right? Because they, they destroyed the design. So, you know, so that was a big impetus for me to keep creating my own content. So, and, and thank God for my brothers helping out. Where's Van? Is he busy? <laughs> <laughs> He's, I think he might be sleeping in. I don't know. It, it, I think it's in the <laughs> studio. Ah, gotcha. Well, Phil, that was a wonderful, that was a beautiful way to describe that, that art. Obviously you take it very. You know, the cup? <laughs> I, I wanted to know if you, um, 
sorry i i blanked oh i know that's what when you talk about like things getting cut out and stuff not being expressed you know when you're not in charge of your own stuff um i when i was watching the film obviously it has subtitles i wanted to know do you feel like there's anything that maybe got lost in the translation of subtitles kind of like how it is with anime sometimes with sub and dub how certain things may not have been expressed in in the way because they don't necessarily translate over with words yeah i wasn't really in charge of the uh the subtitle translation so i didn't to be honest i didn't pay too much attention to it um but i mean that's another reason why all three of us did the english dub you know that usually doesn't happen in a localization but all three of us spoke english you know and then uh, we fought to do our own dubbing you know and we, we did that but um you know i'm, I'm certain i mean whenever you get a translation there's always going to be something lost in the details but why do we anime lovers like to watch sub i mean not everyone right some people like dub i don't want to get into that you know debate but but i mean like a lot of when i was when i was young you know when i was younger we all always preferred subs because we wanted to hear the emotions of the original actors right so sometimes mm -hmm. i think if you get the gist of the idea for the subtitles and you watch the the, the actors emote or, or the certain actions that are being displayed on the screen i think the general gist of the ideas of the movie is i mean it's not a complex movie right i mean i it's a it's a vehicle for us to drive the action forward right and obviously the action speaks for itself um the, the action doesn't need language but when it comes to some of the banter and some of the playful banter i i can feel that you know chemistry that you guys have uh that you bring off screen onto the screen in certain certain funny moments i wanted to know did was any of it improvised because like there was for instance like a part where um van had said had made a comment about um what well, van's character sorry had made a comment along the lines of um of uh uh, about his tattoo and he's like oh well, well i'll die someday or everybody's gonna die someday you know what i mean eventually yeah and, and uh, i think andy's character had made a tattoo like uh, i'm in logistics like how how do you or how do you think i track my packages or something like that um so i i wanted to know if any of that banter like did, was that all written or was any of that just kind of because you guys had that chemistry and improvised. I think um, I, I, some of it is scripted, um, but I mean, like they have a general idea of the structure of the, of the lines, right? But then there's a lot of moments where there's just banter, right? I mean, the, like the tattoo part, the tattoo part was written, that joke was written specifically, uh, but a lot of the other banter is, it was ad lib. Like, I mean, especially there was a really good line that, um, that Andy came up with by himself. And um, we were all laughing on the set. And then it was so funny. They put it in the trailer, the, 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 the Asian trailer. Um, there was a line at the end when we're kind of confronting each other and he's threatening us. And basically Andy's being himself. That's how he is normally. He's very, um, he's, 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 he, he is very good at busting people's balls. I think that's, that's, that's the term. So he, he um, there's a line he says like, uh, he, he, un, he, he, you know, he's so mad at me. He unfriended me on social media. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. it's, it, it's funny. I mean, that, that line in that situation, it's, it's hilarious. But I mean, I mean, that, that's, that's the, that's the great thing about, you know, working together with your buddies, right? I mean, you're not afraid to try stuff. I and mean, what, what is your buddy going to say? You know, you're wasting film. You're not using film. It's digital. <laughs> so, yeah. But right. a lot of it is, uh, is at the, you can ask Andy. I mean, he, he had a, I didn't even, I don't think we gave him a script. No, we did. But we just like, no, Andy, do what you need to do. And especially since Andy was able to speak in English a lot of times and, and uh, in Mandarin the other time. So it was his, his, um, his more natural tongue. So it was able for him to, easier for him to ad lib, I believe. Nice. Now for the actual, like the meth scene where it's like a commercial, uh, you know, <laughs> where, <laughs> like, was that your idea to, to present which it? One, that which part? Which scene? Which scene? The scene, the scene <laughs> where, Van. where Van is uh, like doing the meth cook stuff and it's like. Oh, no, that was all. That was all the directors, man. Um, Alam. Alam and uh, and Frankie, uh, Philip Louis and, and Frankie Tam, the two uh, directors. I mean, they're um, they're first time directors for this movie, but um, they've been very very prolific uh, screenwriters. I'm not sure if you uh, looked them up, but um, most of the movies that you see in Asia right now is either is written by either one of them or both. Um, and, and, and a lot of the big, huge, big budget China movies are, are them too. So, um, so it was great to have them on board, and and they're really smart and super. Um, 
like complex script writers, right? They're able to put in like complex ideas in a very simple manner, and 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 and, and they're and they're very good with story beats, and they're and and they're very they're very up to date with the stuff that they watch and the stuff that they do. So, um, a lot of the story beats they created, like I said, but then my brothers took the story beats and, and kind of went with it themselves, but they I mean, it's not their first rodeo. So they know to stay within character, even when they're ad living. So it was, it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to know, cause Andy kind of told me a little bit about how you worked with Van to you know, do the composition, do the music, but where there was the scene like that scene van was dancing and he had the music on was that catered specifically to van because he's like a you know sort of like a, a music pop star he's a pop he's a pop star he's yeah a, he's a pop idol yeah that's why <laughs> i mean that's one of the I mean, and he knows it too i mean he knows what he is right you know he knows that he's a you know like a pop star and he knows like sometimes they want to see him do certain things but it's more it's a little bit playing on his persona too you know i mean he's not dancing real serious or like you know whatever he's he's really trying to we're trying to play on his persona you know because i mean up to this point all the roles that he got were basically like really the good looking um the girl you know fall in love kind of lovey-dovey stuff right and i'm sure he wanted to do something different and he loves action and then when you're not rolling the camera this is kind of how we normally are so you know, so giving him the opportunity to do that. And I think, you know, he came up, he came with a lot of the ideas. I think that scene you're talking about when he's cooking the meth and he's dancing or whatever, mm -hmm. um, he really discussed a long time with the directors before doing that. So it, it was a lot of it was his design. That's really cool. That's really cool. Now there was, uh, I know that he, I had seen another interview, Van was talking about how he really wanted to do like the parkour and stuff like that. Was that difficult for you to direct or did you not handle the, the parkour? And, well, like, I, the I, told, I, I told him that he had to do taiko. Because thing, because uh, I was, we designed every sequence. Actually, you know, like conceptually, it was, you know, think about Indiana Jones, right? Um, Steven Spielberg and Lucas, they sat down, oh, wouldn't it be cool if Indiana Jones are rolling down a river or getting chased by a rock? And they wrote kind of a movie around it, right? We, we didn't do that. We had a very big structure, but we had set pieces that we knew that we were going to do. And then um, what in the middle was, it was supposedly me and him both doing parkour, chasing a car through tunnels. And, you know, then, you know, then budget limitations make things smaller and smaller and smaller. We, we, you know, we all had these big ideas, so, but we knew there's a part in the middle where he had to do parkour. And we wanted everyone to be something different. Like we wanted him to be very agile, you know, like, surprisingly agile and all that stuff and he's super strong very good with guns me and just you know me at the underdog you know everyone had their own thing so he knew that he had to train that and and he did he was training that when he was in taiwan before he came over to hong kong and then uh and then when he came over he was ready so i know that there were some budget constraints but this was an excellent film like i had a great time with it and i feel like Thank it you. was it was definitely whole but is there anything that you feel like you didn't you weren't able to put into it that you would have liked like another scene that maybe got cut or wasn't able to be filmed that would, you would have liked to include in the narrative. I think, um, I, I don't know if I would include anything more in the movie, but I think I would like to clean. I would definitely have had more time for each scene, everything like acting wise and, um, and action wise. Cause we, 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 there's a little bit of a rush towards certain things. And especially at the end, Andy broke two of my ribs, so I had to fight the whole, film the whole ending with broken ribs, right? It was against the wishes of everybody, but, you know, when you're the producer and you don't have enough money for pickups, you, uh, <laughs> you, you finish the whole movie. But um, I to early. That's why I had to do what I had to do. Andy, 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 Andy to, he's like, you know what? I'm done with this job, Phil. Let me kick you in the ribs and break. <laughs> Is that the worst injury but, he's given you? I know you guys have worked multiple times together. Yes, I think things. Are, yeah, that's that's the worst injury. But I mean, you know, we give each other injuries, right? I kick him in the head sometimes, and they You'll kick his head into back. a wall. You'll get him no, back. What do you mean? No, it's like it's not. Yeah, no, we, you try not to get each other back because I'm the godfather of his children. <laughs> Make sure everything's okay. But, but um, no, it was it was fine. I mean, the, the point is, it was just we. I wish I had more time. If I had more time, I think um, it could have. We could have got. I think. In Chinese, it's like Pak Saidi, you know, more specific, get more detailed in terms of our choreography and, um, and stuff we're able to get on film. But I mean, you know, with the time that we got, I think, I think it turned out pretty decent. I mean, thank, thanks to my buddies helping out. Yeah, you guys did a great job. Um, I genuinely loved it. And I wanted to 
you know, I don't want to, I'm trying not to give any spoilers. So I'm trying to just to touch on little, well, I think that, I think one of the podcasts we did yesterday, they gave all the spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had seen, I had watched the, uh, I had watched the, I think the guy had, are they out already? Is, is it out already? The, one the of them was released. They? There was one release really? because after I watched the movie, I did a, I did a, I did watch one of the interviews. It was like a hour long. I think it was what, Watch or pass is what it was called. Oh, that, that one came out already. Yeah, that was the one that I'm talking about that got the spoilers. We did another one too. We yeah. did three yesterday, right? Yeah, I think he did. He had asked a few spoilery questions. That's why I was trying to avoid them. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, was there anything because of all the different twists as far as like, you know, oh, this is actually how this is? Nope, this is actually how this is uh, for certain characters. Was everybody privy to all of the like shoe drops and all of the uh, twists in the plot? Um, in the everyone script. had the script. Everyone had the script. Everyone had the script. I mean, we had we went through many different versions of the script. There's like the original story is different, and then then the second story is different. The third, which I mean, there was different. Con- not only was there concerns from the director, there's concerns from the investors, and I mean, there's different factors I had to deal with to kind of create this story. But then when the story was finalized, I, everyone had it everyone had it and then uh, we all knew what we had to do like Andy knew what he had to do Van knew what he had to do and I knew what I had to do and then we kind of designed from then on I think a lot of times that's when we get on the set we see each other a lot of those things happen you know we start ad-libbing we start designing the scene but but the whole skeleton everything everyone had in the beginning I mean you can ask Andy I mean he the, the, the thing is like I didn't I, I didn't know how he's going to approach his character I mean I didn't know how Van was going to approach his character I mean they they gave me a gist, right? But you don't really know until you actually got on the set and you start interacting and kind of bouncing off each other. Definitely. And I know you guys have been doing the press on this for years now, I think. Since I love it. It's like, a, it's like a jawbreaker, you know? You can suck on it for di- for years. <laughs> I, well, I wanted to know, has, like, what are the other things that you guys have have been working on in the meantime has this been your your main point of focus because andy had mentioned that you yeah. filmed this back in 2016 is there yeah, anything from the back then is there anything else that you have going on or coming up that you guys want to plug so that you know fans of this movie have something else to look forward to with you guys i i i think al andy is a bunch of projects that's coming out i got a few projects that's coming out but i mean i've done so much since then i mean we've both done so much since then i, I i'm not quite sure but um, I have a TV show coming out on TVB, and Andy has, has uh, Andy has a bunch of movies. I think he has eight movies coming out. <laughs> so, and one, one, I mean, nice. um, a, a fun one I think uh, that I want to talk about is uh, one that I helped Andy with the uh, action choreography. Andy was the lead, and then I, I went in to be the action director. Um, that should be out sometime this year, Andy. Right? I don't know. Freaking pandemic is messing shit up. It is messing with a lot of schedules, but that was a fun movie. That was a fun movie. Um, I remember there was a funny story on that one. Andy had to jump from one rooftop to another rooftop, and um, you know, and uh, I was like, Andy, this is kind of you know, a little bit dangerous, right? You're the lead. I don't want anything to happen to you, and I'm the godfather to your children. <laughs> so, um, and then I and I show, and then I had a double. I, was, I had his double do it. And I showed Andy and my phone, and he's like, he can do it. I can do it. So you know, he went ahead and did it. Two times, that's, and I think he had fun doing it too. That's a scary thing. See, so, yeah, that's so that, that looking forward to that. Did you double for Andy before, or did Andy? I doubled double? for all these guys, I doubled for all these guys, but I mainly doubled for uh Vanessa because uh, I'm slightly you know, my build is not as uh, I mean, I doubled for Sam Hong in uh, in uh, Dragon Squad. Um, so you know, so, I doubled so you've done a lot, lot a lot of doubling. That's interesting. I was a stuntman before I did all this cool stuff. I mean. It was even cooler as a stuntman, but I get paid more now. So, sorry. That, that's <laughs> awesome. And I know we had a few, you know, uh, issues getting into this, uh, getting you in the Zoom link, and I apologize for it. Um, no, no, it's not your fault. It was my fault. I'm just not very tech savvy. <laughs> that, that that's totally okay. I mean, I've been. Some of the people I've talked to are like, like the guy who voices Skeletor. He's like 93. <gasps> so, like, trying to get him. <laughs> like, you got you got him on your show. Yeah, and like, well, and I, oh, let me name drop. But yeah, like Freddy Krueger. So he's like 70. You get Freddy 70 Krueger. Yeah. So like, they don't know how to work computers. And like the pandemic, they're trying to to learn. Shaking, because you're like a celebrity to me now. 
Uh, well, I, when you said anime dub, I was like, I was like, man, I prefer subtitles. But like, we had like everybody from like My Hero and like t- uh, Attack on Titan, and oh my like, God, and stuff. And I was like, man, like this guy, this guy would love that stuff. But like, man, I wish I, I'm going for three more hours with you. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, but uh, the, the the whole point is, you are much more tech savvy than a lot of the guests that that i have had uh i think i think this the oculus oh yeah I, I saw that pop up in another in another one of the uh, it was just our latest hobby me and andy and van you know that's how we get to see each other now during this pandemic we're gonna time. do this after the interview we're gonna play yeah we're gonna go fishing this. go fishing <laughs> nice Wait, so, andy, ask, us, ask us a few more questions before you go i like i mean ask andy something i want to okay andy i didn't want to keep you too long i wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to you know i'll go a little bit longer the next one that's fine you can go ahead and um i mean if andy just go go just five more minutes i was okay. like Hey, that sounds great. That sounds great. Yeah. So then, as, ask Andy something. Andy, back to you know, <laughs> undercover punch and gun. Um, did you? Did you? I, I feel like you had less scenes with more people. Were you there for? Well, that's a really weird way for me to word that. There were a lot of scenes that did not include you. Were you there for the filming of everything, or were you only on set for the filming of the scenes that you were present in? I'm only there when I'm needed to be there. You don't want like to like on every movie, sure. like on every movie. You don't need Andy. Like, Make sure he's in the hotel there. in his robe. Do not tell him to come <laughs> to set. I'm more Andy the introvert. Does, Andy does not like waiting. He does not like waiting. He does not. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if you're his best friend or you're his brother. Uh, Phil, Phil, um, you know, um, uh, it's been, uh, it's been, uh, it's already been about twelve hours. Uh, I don't really, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like a battery, Philip. I'm like a battery, and um, I'm, I'm here right now. It is like the whole time I was really <laughs> close to it because I was thinking about what I had to do every day for when I before I go to work. You know, I would wake up a few hours earlier, get some workout in, and then go on set. So it's like you know, I already spend like in my mind, I'm like, oh, I think I spent like 16 hours on work today already. But then I don't, I didn't realize Mr. Philip mm over here. He had to wear different hats. He's there from like. Crack a dog. 20, 26 hours a day. I don't get to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with all sorts of like complications. And so, yeah, uh, Andy, I was, I was. Andy was talking about the different people that he, you know, the homages uh, yeah. from the earlier decades and the different like people that he looked to to kind of uh, put his performance based on and kind of put those homages to. Can you tell me from your like choreography, uh, Phil, from your like action choreography side, was there anything specific, any specific films that you were trying to take beats from um, when directing the actual fighting? Especially because, especially because you say, sorry, let me just uh, decide to add that because of the way that you describe your directorial style as far as the fighting and you like to tell stories that way. Was there any any directors from back then that you felt like kind of inspired you to tell your stories that way? Any like scenes maybe you didn't pull? I don't think there was like anything specific in terms of like a specific movie, but a specific tone, I think. Um, for instance, that scene where I fought uh, the two guys in the meth lab. Was yes, and stuff. that scene was that, awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, um, there was, I, I always thought about, I, I was telling my crew as we're, you know, the whole choreography process and the filming process I said Jackie Chan I was like uh, I want the Jackie Chan vibe you know yes that's I, I exactly would, what I that's why I was asking you that's what I felt I straight felt Jackie Chan like like B, like some of his smaller like B movies you know I used to watch when yeah, I was a kid. and the, the funny little funny beats that I put in you know like me falling on my butt and stuff like that and, I yeah. loved it I just I loved it yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so I mean so more the tone rather than like a specific movie yeah so I felt that now when I love that you bring up the that fight scene because it goes in like different different rooms. You know, it kind of it, it reminds me of like the hallway scenes and like the Marvel Netflix like Daredevil things like that. Yeah, Daredevil, the one shot. Yeah, yeah. The, and, the fake one, the fake long take. That uh-huh, that, that's exactly what I was thinking of, and and that was I think that was the part where like somebody jumped off of the wall and like punched you through another room, like that. That stuff was insane, and then you got to the end and you're like. 
you had to turn around and you're just like, oh, I guess I got to keep fighting you guys. Um, I loved that scene. But I also liked the sure. end when it was like the three of you guys and you had to like hitch your arm. shoulder, relocate my shoulder. <laughs> so was I'm assuming your shoulder didn't actually get dislocated. That was something. No, was I just had broken ribs. You know, my shoulder is fine. Thank God. <laughs> so that's what I was going to ask. Because of your ribs, when you did the shoulder thing, were you already hurt? I was just hurt everywhere, I think. And I had dysentery too. It was I had to go back to my house every day at lunch to to kind of not sew my pants. I was just sick. It was it was a very difficult process. The ending was terrible. Like I I, I felt like I felt like death. Um, but um, you know, you, you purge you we move on. Like there was, you know, you keep going. You know, you're like, all right, my heroes like probably had to go through worse to do more, to do less, do way more, you know, and and then like you know, that you push to do it. But um, I don't remember how much pain I was in. I was just in a lot of pain, mentally and physically. Did you, <laughs> did you get hurt, Andy, at all oh, on set? Anything I specific? I mean, I don't want to say did you get hurt at all, as if you don't get hurt every time you're fighting. I get hurt in probably every movie that I do. Yeah. I want to see action. He's, he gets hurt. But I don't, he didn't get hurt in this one. He got hurt. He, tell him about your, uh, your leg in the, in the other movie. What leg? Your cap, your Achilles popping up. Oh yeah, I mean, Whoa. I have like MCL to Achilles ruptures from like you know, I have a lot of a lot of injuries, a lot of trophies. Hey Let's Phil, grab your dog. Here. Let's do oh, this. Oh, Emmy, come here, buddy. We're gonna have a whole a whole dog thing. Yeah, he he cries if I'm doing an interview and he's not on my lap, so I had to. <laughs> oh, everybody, there's a small one for everyone. Look, oh yeah. No, you, you, oh. oh, so. That's fun. He, I think actually, he's yeah. on the logo for the show too. Actually, that's awesome. If I can, I'm gonna go on your. You, you're on YouTube and everything, right? Everything, all that. I've actually only started uh, posting on YouTube recently. We were initially okay, but in, how about your audio. old your, your older interviews? Um, so if you look, like, yeah, with like Robert in England and them. If you yeah, look, yeah, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Freddy uh, and stuff. Yeah, just if you type in Literary Joe, um, mm -hmm. which let me pull up something. That might just yeah, because we we'll probably have to move on to the next interview soon. Right. I would. Yeah. yeah I was gonna end. I was gonna end here actually. With the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me hang on. Let me show you. Can you see my yeah. logo? Yeah. Yes. Literary okay. Joe's. Yep. That's where you would find everything. So I just figured I would end that real quick, and then um, is there anything? So now that we have you two focus, is there anything you guys want to? Um, wrap up with uh say you know to the audience anything that people don't ask you before i wrap this up to make sure that you guys have a platform to do so um i'll say something real quick andy will say something i think um i, I just want to say thank you for your support keep watching our stuff you know um the only way we can the only way we can make more if, if you keep watching and keep uh, you know keep supporting us so appreciate all that and i want to thank my two brothers andy and vanessa even though vanessa's not here today um without them you know, none of this would be possible. So hopefully we can continue to make more movies together for you guys to enjoy. Thank you guys so much. That is awesome. Andy, 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 is Andy. anything that you wanted to add on that? No, oh, I'm not really a talker, but I just want to say I appreciate this, Joe. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure and stay safe, everyone. Literary Joe's Inner Child Podcast. <laughs>